not everyone wants to spend a lot of money on a gaming PC. And honestly, a powerful gaming PC costs a hell lot and not everyone can afford that. But what if I told you, you can build a decent gaming PC that can handle the latest AAA titles for just 30,000 rupees? Well, it's true. And today, I'm going to talk about exactly that. Hey guys, this is Akshay from bbomb.com and today I want you guys to meet something really special. Something you guys have been asking us to do for a very long time. I want you guys to meet Atreus. Yeah, that's the name we gave to a budget gaming PC that just cost us around 30,000 rupees. I'll tell you all about the parts we used and the games we played, but before we do that, how about you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we post a new video. Now that you've done that, let's get started. First, let's talk about the parts we've used for this rig. We used an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G APU. I'll tell you more about what an APU is later. We also used 8 gigs of 2400MHz DDR4 RAM, an ASUS Prime A320M K motherboard, but you can use one from Gigabyte or MSI or whatever as long as it has 320M in the name. We used a Seagate 500GB hard disk and to keep all this stuff inside something, we got a Fox in cabinet that surprisingly came with its own PSU. So what really is an APU and why the hell did we choose to go with one? I'm sure you're thinking, they could have gone with an Intel processor or something, but hear me out, okay? If we chose an Intel CPU or something of the sort, we'd need to buy a dedicated graphics card because, well, gaming. Buying a dedicated graphics card would suck because we're on a budget. But AMD's APUs, like the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G APU we're using, well, this one has AMD Vega 11 graphics integrated with the processor. Plus, you must be aware of the GPU price hike due to crypto mining, right? Good thing is that the prices of APUs won't increase due to this because using APUs for mining cryptocurrencies makes really no sense at all. Anyway, moving on, let's put all of this together, shall we? Now that we have all the parts, let's put them together, shall we? First, we'll open up the AM4 socket and place the processor on top of it. Make sure you secure it with the lever. Next, place the stock cooler that came with the APU on top of it and screw the screws. <laughs> Connect the fan's cable to the location marked CPU fan on the motherboard. Place the RAM sticks inside the RAM slots. If you don't know what a RAM slot looks like, please don't attempt to build your own PC yet. Now, connect the PSU's 24 pins into the 24 pin socket on the motherboard and the ATX cable into, you guessed it, the ATX slot. It's easy, all the ports are properly marked on the motherboard, so it will be easy enough to find them. Seriously. Connect one end of the SATA cable to the hard disk and the other to the SATA port on the motherboard. Any one of the SATA ports will work. In the end, connect the cabinet's front panel pins to the motherboard in the designated slots. The front USB ports go into the USB 3.4 or the USB 5.6 pins. The audio jack port goes into the pins marked AAFP and the cables for the power switch, LED, etc. go into the JFP pins. With all of that done, it's time to power up the computer and install Windows, all the drivers and that sort of stuff. And then finally, we move on to the good stuff, testing it all out. Now that we have our PC up and running, it's time to install some games on it to test out its real-world performance. We're gonna test out CSGO, Rocket League, PUBG, Tom Clancy's Wildlands and GTA 5. As you can very well see, CSGO runs perfectly fine at 1080p with high settings, giving me an average FPS of 83 frames per second, which is awesome. On the other hand, if I switch graphics to low at 1080p, CSGO gets an average of 110 FPS, which is insane and really just wow. At 1080p on high settings, Rocket League is perfectly playable, getting an average of 55 frames per second. However, if you need a better frame rate, Switching the settings to low resulted in us getting 89 FPS on average. Ah, the game that's everywhere these days. PUBG literally brings our PC down on its knees. At 1080p with low settings, we were able to get around 26 FPS on average. Switching to 720p with low settings at least brought it up to 34 frames per second on average. In a game like PUBG though, that's not really good enough. But that's partly PUBG's fault too. The game is known to be very heavy or maybe it's not very optimized yet. Anyway, moving on. 
I really didn't expect a rupees 30,000 build to run Wildlands, but this thing surprised me. At 1080p with low settings, I was getting around 29 FPS on average. But change that to low with 720p and the frame rate jumps up to 42 FPS, which is amazing for the cost of the build. I mean, it's a 30,000 rupees gaming PC we are talking about. I also played GTA 5 on a PC and it worked well enough. At 1080p with low settings, I got an average of 70 frames per second, which is pretty damn good, and switching to 720p with low settings increased the frame rate to 75 FPS, which is awesome. Overall, games performed really well on our PC, especially considering it cost just 30,000 rupees. I mean, running Tom Clancy's Wildlands was just something we did for fun, and when it actually ran on this PC, we were all really excited. But we didn't really just play games, we benchmarked as well. Now, since we are using a 5400 RPM hard disk drive, performing a read-write benchmark was kind of silly. Instead, we focused on GPU benchmarking. On Firestrike, a benchmark for high-performance gaming PCs, our PC scored 2,937, which is fairly good. However, on Skydiver Benchmark, a test for gaming laptops and mid-range PCs, our PC scored a whopping 11,308, which puts it at the performance level of the MX150 GPU. Because of budget constraints, we had to use a hard disk instead of an SSD, and that's the biggest bottleneck here. So if you can overshoot the budget a little bit, I would suggest you go for an SSD or a RAM of a higher frequency, because that would make a lot of difference. So if you're able to go up to 40,000, I would recommend you get a 128GB SSD and a higher frequency RAM. I know, 128GB SSD is low on space, but it will drastically improve performance for the one or two odd games you'll keep installed on it. Also, add a better PSU. We'd recommend Cooler Master or Corsair's 450W unit. You can also upgrade the motherboard to a 350M because you'll then be able to overclock the processor to a steady 4GHz for even better performance. Then again, if you're willing to go up to 50,000, get an NVIDIA 1050Ti, upgrade your RAM, get an SSD and yes, upgrade the motherboard to 350M for overclocking, along with the PSU from Corsair or Cooler Master. With this, you can play almost any game ever released for a PC. So yeah, if you thought building a decent gaming PC under 30,000 is impossible, well, you're really very wrong. Honestly, when we started researching for this topic, I wasn't sure we would be able to build a gaming PC as good as this. I mean, our gaming PC costs around 30,000 and it even runs AAA titles. So if you always wanted to build a gaming PC but you're on a tight budget, this is the perfect way to build one thanks to AMD's new APUs. Plus, you can always upgrade it later with a dedicated GPU, especially once the prices drop back to normal. So there you have it. That's all about building a budget gaming PC in just 30,000 rupees. I leave links to all of the things we use in the description down below. And if you have any doubts, feel free to comment because we'll definitely help you out. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.